Hello and welcome. This is Zero Limits Living. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. Every week I bring you information and inspiration to transform your life. Apparently the show's doing well enough and getting popular enough that you can now see it or hear it on 1,000 platforms across the galaxy. And that includes Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, uh, YouTube, download apps, Spotify, just about anything that you can name. I'm putting all the episodes in one place to make it easy for you. Go to Zero Limits Living TV.com. Zero Limits Living TV.com. Pack a lunch because there's now 40 some episodes over there and more coming. Next, people often ask, what is the fastest way for transformation? How do you actually go from zero to zero limits living? Well, coaching. I started Miracles Coaching almost 20 years ago. It's proven. It's tested. It's a system that works. I even trademarked it a long time ago. Check it out. You can have a free consultation. Just go to MiraclesCoaching.com. MiraclesCoaching.com. And now to today's episode. These, these episodes get better and better and go deeper and deeper. So let me ask you a few questions. What if you are single? What if you're a single mom? What if you have kids? What if you're trying to do this on your own? What if you're worried about the pandemic, the epidemic, or anything else that's going on in the world? What if you're worried about your income? What if you're trying to find a side hustle that can turn into some money? How do you promote yourself? What if you're interested in passions like art? How do you turn your art into business? All of this and more can come from one source. And that source, the answers are going to come from my next guest. Let me tell you who she is. I want to read the introduction to get it right. Jess Hughes is an award-winning artist, author, visibility coach, and a single mom of seven children. Count them, seven. As CEO of Jessica Hughes Media and Fine Art, she leads multiple arms of the brand to both promote her own paintings as well as leading online on their online programs for artists and entrepreneurs looking for the mindset and skill set to become unstoppable. Jess is co-author of the international bestseller. She did it, and so can you. It chronicles her steps and strategies to rapid success. Jess has overcome the dark days of addiction and trauma to courageously change everything, embrace joy, and never look back. Her purpose is clear, to uplift and empower others in everything she creates. Her writing, painting, speaking, and coaching is a living example that incredible joy and success can exist on the other side of adversary, or adversity. Jess believes art is accessible to everyone as a powerful tool for healing, stress relief, and self-discovery. Jess's drive and passion to empower others has taken her from zero to six figures in just one year and invisible to Forbes. She has been featured on Forbes, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, and more. Her next book, Right Now, will be released in the fall of 2022. Please welcome Jessica, standing ovation. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm so honored to be here with you, and I can't wait to have this conversation. I'm excited to go deep in all things. <laughs> deep in all things. Well, how are you today? What have you been up to? Today, has uh, I've done some coaching for some of my fellow artists today. I have... Uh, I had a migraine this morning, so I had to <laughs> rebound from that. But um, it, it was a metaphor for that media bio that you just read, you know, how to manage the real life that continues to go on and step into a place of joy and abundance and be present for for the really delicious magic that that can be on the other side of it. And, and that seems to be the lesson that occurs when I pay attention over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And rebound might be the key word for today, because when I what I know of you and what I just read of your bio and what you just said is all about you transforming what's going on. A migraine for a lot of people stops them. They're done. They're done for the day. They could be done for the weeks. I was in a relationship once and the migraine could cripple her for a couple of weeks. Nothing gets done. You had a migraine this morning <laughs> and here you are doing an interview. 
So we're going to have to look at this rebounding and the rebounding from addiction, rebounding from trauma, rebounding from a relationship, apparently, because you're on your own with seven kids. Mm -hmm. uh, where do we actually even start, Jess? How far back do we need to go to find out the beginning of a transformation? Well, I had this memory that came really vividly and everything I do in my life now is really guided by my intuition, by tapping into the universe. And that's really why I'm so excited to talk to your audience specifically, because if they're watching you, they're on that journey of wanting, you know, to find other ways than therapy or, you know, our own self will and discipline, you know, I'm don't have discipline. I am disorganized and I keep it very real because I'm juggling a lot, but like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have <laughs> discipline. You don't, don't have discipline. A person who just gave me this bio with all of these successes and what you're doing, managing the seven kids and running a business and appearing in Forbes and getting a migraine in the morning, but showing up for an interview in the afternoon, you don't have discipline. I have a strong bounce back game. That's what I have. And it's <laughs> it's from really tuning in like a radio dial to energy that will fulfill me. And I love to be interviewed and talk about my story because I've gotten the, the letters, the DMs, the emails about um, how powerful that is when you hear someone who's gone through what, what I've gone through that resonates with something in everybody. Um, we're all in this fear um infused culture of mm. you know right or wrong good bad all the judgment and it's really my journey has been how to find the unconditional love and abundance from a source outside of me or so outside of another let, person or experience let and, me in, let interrupt you there because we need to fill in some gaps yeah uh, I would say you were probably not always a rebounder that growing up somewhere in there with the experiences you were having, you had to learn that skill. So let's go back. Tell us your story. What was going on as you were growing up or in that relationship you were in? Give us the background. Well, the memory that came up for me as I was getting ready for this was the vision. And I think I can paint this picture for people. I remember very clearly when I had seven kids under 10 years old and I lived in a village where we could walk. And I remember pushing a triple so stroller with my two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old. I had a baby strapped to my chest and I had the three older ones on bikes. Two were on bikes, one was walking the dog and, and just going for a walk for a minute of, of fresh air and, and sanity and what it took to, to be visible for the cars to drive by and to be a spectacle. And, and I really feel like so much of raising these children was about <clears throat> resilience and mm. how to be resilient when life comes crashing to your knees um, with that many people, you know, and I was not equipped back then to, um, I had to learn the skill of resiliency. I had to learn to shift my mindset. Um, and it really took, uh, you know, living an illusion of perfection for almost 20 years before I self-destructed. And mm. you know, those were the days when I thought that what everyone thought of us mattered and that we had to be this perfect, beautiful family. And I kept myself so tightly wound that um, circumstances were not around me where I felt okay with who I was. And I mm -hmm. started abusing um, alcohol. I started abusing pharmaceuticals. I would abuse stuff to ramp up and do it all and look perfect and amazing. And then I have to take stuff to come down and, and tranquilize myself essentially. And before I went to rehab in January of 2018, you know, the last, I, last three years is blurry for me. And, and I've had mm. to work on overcoming that shame that I carried with me. Um, and so much of the overcoming is about allowing myself to let go of the past and know that we are able to recreate ourselves every new morning when we wake up, we can pivot, we can take the lemons and, you know, through the power of the tools that I use, and I'll talk about the, um, 
the kind of fusion of meditation, journaling, and writing and painting that I do, um, that's where I connect to the power greater than me. And that is where I've realized that, you know, I love the zero limits. That was the first thing I was like, oh, I can't wait to talk because that's what it's about. <laughs> it's about taking the limits off of ourselves mm -hmm. and and looking forward um, no matter what what is going on. So um, how did you get to that point? What was the very first experience of you lifting one of those limits of it? Was it enrolling and getting some help? Was it somebody? Was it, you know, yeah. what? It was really the moment of um, hitting rock bottom. Yeah. You know, when I was in my art studio trying to self-will my way better, not ask mm. for help. I'd isolated myself those last five years mm -hmm. to such a point. I didn't want anyone to see me or hear me or see behind the curtain um, that I was a failure, that I had, you know, let people down. You know, all of that self-talk that was just fueling the addiction and the self-destruction and and I just crumpled on the ground and realized, you know, it was really a moment of clarity where I went, I need help. I can't do this. And, and did you call for help? Did you make a call? Did you enroll? What did you do? I I called um, a, a friend who said, you know, maybe rehab just is like a vacation, you know, tried to spin it, right. been trying and trying and trying to get through you know, my solitary single friend. And uh, I called the rehab that night. They came and picked me up at one in the morning and said, you know, I was thinking, oh, I'll get help eight weeks down the road when there's availability. And <laughs> I was terrified. I, I had to leave my everything as I knew it. Um, but it was that safe That's huge. level. No phone, no access to the outside world. Uh, total humility, like bring me to my knees kind of humility. But it was, you know, the house of cards collapsed. And mm -hmm. there is only way, one one way to go <laughs> in that. And it's up, you know, in those moments. That's why it's uh, called rock bottom. Uh, and so I realized I had to change everything if I was going to remain clean and sober. I am proud of you. I feel for you. I have chills going up and down my body. <laughs> My first wife, when we were struggling and everything, came to me one evening and said she had a problem. And that's when she told me she had an alcohol addiction, which I didn't even see. Mm -hmm. She had hid it so well and hid bottles. And we didn't really have money. I wasn't even sure how she was doing this. And I, re I remember the confusion in my, on my part. And I remember the sense of trying to understand the pride, not the pride, the 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 vulnerable act of asking for help oh. that came from her. Yeah. Because I also called and they said, bring her right in to the hospital. I take her there and I had to leave her. Mm -hmm. I leave her. I got chills right now thinking about, you know, this is a week of somebody going to detox. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in the program? I was in 30 days. Mm -hmm. So for me to release control of, um, everything that was happening with my kids. My youngest yes. was nine years old at the time. They're all within 10 years. So they're really lumped together. And it was a lot to surrender mm -hmm. and I trust that it was going to be okay. I had to, you know, it was where I was forced to relinquish the control. You know, mm -hmm. we think we can control everything. And the only thing we can control is our perspective, our thoughts, you know, and that's what my journey has really been about is retraining the things I think about um, and believe about myself to, to get to this point where uh, I love who I am. I'm so grateful <sighs> for the darkness of what I went through because it had it been any less painful, I'd still be back there. I'd yeah. still be numbing out. I'd still be you know, not bold about asking for what I want in my life and then going out and claiming it. Oh, oh the, you are singing to the choir here. I so love what you just said, but you were even grateful for the darkness. I love that phrase that you were grateful for the darkness because that was the turnaround moment for you, getting the help and coming out. Now, when you came out, was that an easy road? I, I'm not <laughs> wanting to be a stupid question, but I'm trying to to feel what no, that was like. 
Yeah. No, it took incredible yeah. humility. I knew I had to leave the the marriage that I was in. Oh, it, it, wow. Um, yes. That was a big thing. I have all these children and I had not been on my own for almost 20 years. So my mom, I moved in with her for the first few months and went to outpatient treatment every single day for months and months. And mm -hmm. I really worked on you know, I, I committed to a life of radical honesty, really, because I, I realized that we can deceive ourselves mm -hmm. in all these sophisticated ways. I didn't think I had a problem, you know, and it's funny, they talk about trading one thing for another and the eating disorder that I had hidden for three decades um, then came out. So it was not an e easy first mm. year. I had to learn to live on my own and then say, you know what? I have an eating thing too. And, and I went to eating disorder treatment that year for 30 days, another 30 days. And wow. so it's been a long haul back, but um, COVID and the lockdown, you know, that was a teaching moment. That was really the rise of me because it was so infused with fear in the early months, right? Everyone, you know, talk about out of control, and my oldest son has a lung condition. So I had to bring him home and put all other six of them to their dad and be safe space for him. And, you know, I always thought if the world would just stop, if I was released of all these responsibilities, <laughs> then I'd be amazing. And then the world stopped and I only have one kid home for, mm. for the whole first six months. And I was the energizer bunny trying to get perfect again. And then I had a moment four months in where the depression came back, the anxiety come back. And I, mm. I remember I had another turning point and it was, I looked in my mirror because I wanted to take something to, to make it all go away, just take oh. away the pain. Yeah. And I looked in that mirror and I looked in my eyes and I was like, I wonder if I know there's, there's my soul in there. And that's when I really thought it was in there, but it's really, you know, the non-physical us is the eternal. Yes. And I locked eyes with something and I went, all right, we're going to go and really do the inner work. And, and mm. that is when, and that was really only two years ago. Um, that was when it just, began, you know, I realized I didn't want to work part-time. I, I wanted to pursue my dreams. We get this one beautiful life here mm -hmm. in the physical world. And one of the things I inherently believe is that there is this creativity, this creative genius inside each and every human being on this earth. And part of the journey here is to bring our ideas, our unique, energetic amazingness into the world. And so it was about, you know, looking at all of the people who said, nah, Jess, you got seven kids. Like you need to get a real job. This is, <laughs> you not, you know, the artists starve. Um, I had three or three prior companies that I had, you know, tried to create. I'd experienced that and I was not willing to let it go anymore. And I said, I don't have any startup cash. I don't have any credit anymore because of the divorce. Um, I have no safety net and it, I really, you know, when there's no other options, it's like, how badly do I want to fulfill that calling? And so I decided to start being a full-time painter in September of 2020. And, uh, your story is, is staggering. Your story is amazing, especially when you look at the time from 2018 and so forth to now, that's not a very long period of time. No. And, You've had life experiences just condensed like torpedoes that were shot at you, but also you've risen from the ashes, so to speak. And you, what I love is that not only have you learned from it, but you're grateful for it, and you reconnected to a divine connection within you. I'm using the word divine. You said there was something there and you locked on it when you looked in the mirror and you looked in the it, to no, your it's eyes. Divine. It is yes, divine. Uh, well, I think that's where zero limits living is all about is when we go to the divine and we drop the human mind because the human mind is the one with the limits. The divine mind doesn't have any limits. We're the ones applying the limits to ourselves. 
So your story is inspiring. And one of the reasons I wanted you here is because you help so many people at this point with them wanting to express their passion, them wanting to be artists. And of course, my love, Lisa Winston, is one of your, uh, your disciples, so to speak. And she wanted you to see this is a canvas, a stretch canvas print that only arrived today. Oh, I love it. Uh, well, I already took it. I said, I'm keeping <laughs> this one. And of course, it's based on a much longer original painting that would go over somebody's sofa or over their bed or in an office. But I love it. We've got zero limits in there. We've got the zero. We got just do it. We've got take the first step, expect miracles, all of this. And I'm sharing it because Lisa did that. But you were the one who encouraged her. And what I keep getting reports of is that you keep encouraging all these people. So one of my questions here is, who encouraged you? When you're scrambling out of the dark, and yes, you were getting help from the professionals there, but was there something, someone, a, a book, a teacher, a coach, a mentor? Who encouraged Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Coaching, for sure. Uh, I Okay. Um, I knew that part of the art, you know, moving into the online space as an artist, because we were still locked down at that point, um, I heard this voice that was like, just paint, just paint, just paint, just paint from September to December. And that was the first four months. And I unleashed over a hundred paintings in that time. And then I tripped over by chance um, into, I don't even know how I found them, but it was a media company that talked about being visible. And um, I thought, well, you know, I have to do these lives on Instagram, you know, to connect with people. I'm scared to death of the camera. I'm scared to death of speaking. Like I am the introverted artist that really prefers to, you know, be holed up in my studio <laughs> and really, be outside. but um, I did this boot camp and they talked about uh, mindset. And that was really, you know, it was paralleling what I was already doing on my own through journaling and meditation and a fusion of, of the meditation journaling and, and painting that I was pulling all together um, as my art that I wasn't showing anyone. It was, it was where I was connecting with the divine and having a conversation. And, um, you know, I've created a framework around that and it's about uncensoring ourselves. It's about being unconditional with ourselves and then moving into the unlimited, um, mm -hmm. connecting with that energy source mm -hmm. to allow it to flow through. And I shared my story in this group and I didn't think I had a story. You know, that's where I was coming from. Who am me? I'm just an art. I'm just an artist. And I crept into this thing, not knowing what I was doing. And uh, someone asked me to be on their podcast. And I said, well, okay. <laughs> and I got into the coaching program and then I got into another coaching program and I started really listening and paying attention. And I read Happy Pocket Full of Money in January mm -hmm. of 2021. Mm -hmm. right. And that was like breakthrough moment. Oh. It made sense. Um, everything that I had intuitively felt it finally made sense. And I realized that I could actually redefine my life through the power of future gratitude and through writing myself into um, that future identity, the powerhouse Jess that was out there to influence and serve others through all of these mediums. And I didn't believe I could do it. But I Jess, look, Jess let me let me interrupt. I, I got to interrupt. I cannot believe that you're uncomfortable on camera or were at one point because you are one of the most present people I've ever interviewed. You are oh one of the God. most articulate people I've ever interviewed. You are one of the most centered and secure people I've ever interviewed. You just come across like, I've been doing this all my life. This is old it's, school. You know, I do this in my sleep, Joe. Call me up anytime. This is... <laughs> You know, there are a few I could probably open to any page and and say, I am a global leader re leading leaders. I am articulate. I am compelling. I love the camera because I didn't believe any of those things. Oh, this is good. And I thought, All right. you know, and that's where it's relevant. That's why I was so excited to talk yeah. with you because yeah. your audience will resonate with with this. And it's about and I resonate with this personally mm -hmm. because I, again, when you were coaching Lisa, and you're still coaching Lisa. Yeah. 
Um, but you were talking about the future gratitude. And I said, oh, that is such a cool name. And she described what it was. And I thought, what a cool process. Yes. And, you know, I'm 100% behind it. So what is that? And is this is this your idea? Or did you get it from somebody and you're applying it? Julia Cameron in the artist yeah. way is like the standard. So it's like if the morning pages met future gratitude, met affirmations, met letters from my future self to me. I mean, a lot of it came to me. A lot of it was just pulled and, it, and then they just had a kit. That's what my process is. And this <laughs> intuitive hit, so well so like, write this book right now with the play on words, W-R-I-T-E, now, because the now, you know, going into flow state, being present, that's mm. that's what we have. And that is where, and so it's this combination, you know, first I had to uncensor. Um, that was the first part of this process is allowing ourselves safety where we're not going to be judged or criticized or, you know, it's not documenting like I did in fourth grade in my diary today I sat in math class, you know, it is right. about um, emptying, emptying it all out. And I had to do a lot of purging and uncensored writing where it was just letting all the darkness and the fear and the anxiety out in a stream of consciousness. And I did this for a long time. And then when I, in 2021, that's when I started pulling together the power of the future gratitude, where you are like skipping forward in the timeline, yeah. you know, there's a, an event that you're afraid of, like this interview, I'm going to be with Dr. Joe Vitale, like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. <laughs> and so I skip forward to when it's already done. People love it. It's amazing. And I feel into that motion and I'm so grateful for that. And so I write that down. I am so grateful to get to speak to hundreds of thousands, tens of however many, um, and share my story with no expectation of anything back, you know, just the experience. And so it you, you know that there's a lot of science that's backing all of this up. I mean, I had Benjamin Hardy, Dr. Benjamin Hardy is one of my guests, and he wrote a book, I think it's called Your Your Future Self Now or Your Future Now. And he talks about your future self, and it's a concept that's being kicked around quite a bit. But it's also in metaphysics because Neville Goddard, who I just mm -hmm. call Neville, and I refer to his method as Nevelizing, always talked about um, uh, going to the end result yes. and feeling from the end result. So you're past it. You already did the show, and now you're writing about the show. As I understand it, and I, I want you to explain it so everybody gets this, as I understand it, your future gratitude journal can be any journal. You just buy a notebook or your, mm -hmm. anything that you recommend. Yep. And then you start writing in it. But what you're writing in it is what you want from the perspective that it already took place. Right. Right. And you deal and with all the emotion and excitement of fulfillment. All of that. And then to take it further, it's like who is really feeling into that future self? What kind of characteristics is she? Like if I wasn't afraid, if I had no limits, if I dropped all these limiting beliefs that I have, you know, when I realized that the ability to imagine a different reality, like man, imagination central, like that's what I'm all about. I've been, <laughs> that that's how you manifest. And I just wrote it to, to really retrain my mind. Like I am these things. I am magnificent. I didn't believe it, but I wrote it until I believed it. So then it would shift into that. And then because life happens and I'm juggling you know, a lot of responsibility um, on the down days, it was really focused on trusting that everything I need is I can give myself, you know, and so I started writing a love letter from my future self to me, ooey gooey, I'm still single, you know, so it's, I realized how powerful is that, you know, allow the divine to speak through a future version of me to me. And then I shifted into trusting that you know, what if, what if I trust that knowledge or business savvy or decisions could come from that higher, you know, that divine source really. And so then letters from my coach and then, you know, it's, so it just really unfolded, unfolded, unfolded. So it really was uncensoring. And then I have exercises about becoming unconditional 
with ourselves. We need to be unconditionally loving and abundant and wealthy to ourselves if we want to attract that. Mm. And then it's really about shifting into, you know, the, the framework that I have under unlimited is just feeling into appreciation and gratitude and just loving the world when I realized my capacity is unlimited to love other people, to love beauty, to find beauty in the tiniest details, you know, (laughs) the burnt leaf hanging off my tree out there, looking at that and going, gosh, I appreciate how beautiful that that is when you slow down to look. And so And so when there's there's people that are watching and they're probably intrigued and they're even getting excited because you're just a volcanic light bulb i mean you you just have so much voltage coming out of you and your your love for what you're doing your passion your expression you're not going to stay single for long if you don't want to be single i mean that's that's going to be handled pretty quick well, I'm human i still am evolving like i have a lot of faults man i am not perfect <laughs> Well, neither am I. So we're all we're all here in the human race, just enjoying each other uh, to the best that we can. So if there are people watching, but they're 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 doubting, they're really thinking like, oh, that works for Joe and it works for Jess and it works for all these other people I've read about. But it's not going to work for me. Nothing ever works for me. How do they get their head out of the muck and begin to move in a new direction? What would be your advice? Surround yourself with the people that are doing the things you want to do that think the way you want to think that that are Mm. about reaching for that bigger thing no matter what you know it's really i had to i have every excuse under the book i'm an addict i'm a single mother you know like look at the stigmas around mental health and all of this stuff all of these things all of this crap that i could you know say you know i have these things uh, therefore I can't do it, you know, and, and if I can do this, like anybody can, and that's why I'm so committed to this, no matter what, you know, if it needs to come in the form of books, I'll write the books. If I have to speak, I'll speak. If I need to, it's about getting comfortable with the uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that, and, and everything is food, you know, everything is fuel. And so I have really strict boundaries now around, I don't watch the news. I am not buying into the recession. I'm not buying into the fear. I'm not buying into the scarcity. I refuse. Oh, no, yes, yes. So oh, I look I, naive. I don't care. I, I um, love it. I love it. I love where you're coming from. So you started at the beginning of this interview, you had referenced intuition and how you paid attention to it and how it's been guiding you. And it seems to be guiding you in all kinds of directions that lead to some wonderful opportunities like you appearing with Forbes, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. I mean, there's a mouthful of initials there. Yeah. <laughs> how how do we reconnect with intuition? If there's people watching and they're going, okay, I, I want to have a taste of what she's talking about. Oh. And apparently this intuition is going to guide me. Absolutely. How do I get there? How do I reawaken intuition or reconnect? I think uh, the first step is finding safe space for you to mm. slow down and protect what comes in, you know, if I don't, if I, if people want to gossip around me, I just step away. I don't need to argue. I don't need to anything. So it's like what comes in can either take a step. What we focus on is magnified. And that has been the chiming thing that, that I keep thinking about just knowing that if I focus on what I want to see, what I want to see, which is the light in humanity, mm. um, the abundance, the prosperity that we can create out of nothing. Um, And it's, I think creativity is so important, allowing ourselves to unlearn what we've been taught in school. You know, we learn about our limits. Um, Mm -hmm. It doesn't cultivate creativity or imagination. And so, you know, there's these formulas, these rigid you know, first you go to high school, then you go to college. And if you don't have qualifications, then you're not going to get it. You know, it's like we wake up in scarcity mode. And so creating that safe space to tap into the eternal, the divine. Okay. So do you meditate? Do you make the time for the silence as Neville used to say, or is it the future gratitude is the big thing that you're doing on a daily basis? On a daily basis, I cl- all, sometimes all I can do is close my eyes and get still for mm. five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I wear 
AirPods a lot in the morning and put binaural beats in or frequencies um, to shift into deeper brainwave states to, to really, it is about that creativity, that, that creative genius in every single human being. And most of us don't even know we have it. We're out of tune with that, that we can create a reality for ourselves. Um, and so finding the, the now, you know, a way to get into flow state, whether that's through silence, whether it's a guided meditation, whether it's sitting on the earth outside, you know, whatever that is, um, I'm all about going, you know, disrupting this thing that we have to be rigid about it, mm -hmm. um, find the silence and connect to it somehow. And then I will immediately shift into the stream of consciousness, free flow writing, uncensored, un you know, however, it, and I allow it to unfold. I allow, you know, I, I write, I create time to do this some I've been known to write up to four hours in a day sometimes wow. only minutes but um that is where I get my answers and the energy um and and that's where I tap into intuitive guidance and so it's intuitive writing and I've taken it one step further along the lines of the safe space you know how many people love to play in finger paint and everything when we were kids everybody almost everybody did but somewhere along the line criticism judgment opinion mm. needing to conform and fit in comes in and they stop but i know so many trapped creatives waiting for permission mm. and um and so the painting on top of the words if someone knows that let's say you're really bottled up with something you know a lot of self destructive the inner critic is just taking the bat to you and mm. beating away and you have nowhere to put that maybe you can't afford therapy maybe you have been disillusioned by therapy you know i put it here and if you know you can paint right on top of it just finger paint just scrape into it you know i tuned into that in rehab when i had no fine motor control we had there was an art therapy room and that's where this was really uh it came from that moment of just relinquishing all I had in, is is just my fingers because I shook so badly and just scraping in and letting the emotion out. And so it's about pairing the verbal and then allowing the nonverbal mm. expression, it's self-expression unleashed to okay. come out and fuse it together. And so it's the stillness, it's the verbal, it's the nonverbal uncensored self-expression and you can see on the painting behind me when I shifted into this kind of painting um, it resonated with people in a way that they didn't consciously understand what it was but it's mm -hmm. the energy of moving into owning who who we are and and you know disrupting the rules I think the the most radical thing we can do is choose to believe in our own prosperity and and trust the intuition the divine god whatever people want to name it mm -hmm. it's right there it's just tuning in and and this this you know with lisa i really saw her shift into a whole new intuitive style of painting after this workshop yes. I did about the intuitive journaling and painting and i did a guided meditation i had people write um, and then we painted together and, and in a way that it's about, there's no right or wrong way to create. It's, it's honoring. Is, oh, it, and I love, I've been hearing about your workshops. I, I'm going to hire you as my coach. I mean, you are, you're just unbelievable. You've learned so much. You've got practical experience and you're still learning, but you're still sharing and you're taking on all the little ducklings around you, you know, and helping them and hurting them to go in the right direction, which leads to an interesting question, because I know a lot of people have said over the years to me and they're saying it to each other and other people that they want to do art, but they want to make money from their art. And then they collapse the whole passion by saying, I'll never make a dime from it. Right. Nobody makes any money from art. There are too many artists. And we can say this in any creative area. We can go, I want to make music, yeah. but there's too many musicians. There's too many albums. We can say this with writing. I want to be an author like Joe Vitale, but there's too many books. There's too many authors. I won't make any money. 
how do you address yeah. that that inner in a, I call it an inner block because we can find evidence of people coming out of nowhere making money in art and music and everything else. How do you help these people get past that block? We can find evidence for whatever we want to believe. If if you want oh, to argue, that's, for your that's it right there. That's it. I say that all the time. Go we can it. find we can find yeah. evidence for whatever we want to believe. Right. Oh, that's the new bumper sticker. That is so good, yeah. Jess. I'm sorry. I just had to. <laughs> I just had to blow a horn and say, look what she just said. So go ahead, go ahead. We can find evidence yeah, for anything you want to believe. Anything. And and so as far as like having prosperity, success, wealth, abundance, all of that stuff, we can look through the lens of, of what's not possible or we can look through the lens of, okay, find someone that is less intelligent than you that's out there making a killing. Find someone that's less attractive than you and is making a killing. You know, all these limitations of I'm too old, I'm not smart enough, I'm too fat, I'm too thin, you know, like whatever you want to believe, have at it. But I've I've written myself into where I am right now and uh, surpassed all of that because I chose to create a new reality and a new belief system for myself without mm -hmm. looking to anybody else to um to to help. And in the process, I've built incredible relationships and and connections. And that's another part of it is I can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. Um I choose my thoughts you know, but it is about building relationships. And I think some of us have been so burned by trauma and mm -hmm. heartache and heartbreak mm -hmm. and grief. Disappointment. Yes. Yes. It's that we're, we're jaded and we don't want to connect and we don't want to be vulnerable, but this ability to be radically like, look for the silver linings, look for the gratitude and the pain and look, I resonate with people's highest selves. You know, that's what I see in them. Mm -hmm. And, and, and like incredible yeah. things can come for that. And I realized I can like blow the lid off my capacity to love and hold space for the highest version of everybody I come into contact with. And, and that's you know, what's so remarkable is I, <laughs> You have so much enthusiasm and you're so passionate and you're just lighting up the, the screen here. And yet you woke up with a migraine. <laughs> what happened to that woman? I mean, take me back to that because I think people need to hear this. Oh, you're, yeah. You're not always plugged in. You're not always radiant. You're not always smiling. You wake up in the morning and there's a migraine. What right. is your first thought and what do you do? Right. Absolutely. I woke up this morning and I had to take the boys to, to high school because I have not called the bus system yet and told them, you know, because we swap, you know, there's all those little realities, micro details and realities that can bog you down. And so with the migraine, I drove them to high school and I dropped them off, wow. Wow. And went back to bed, I took my emergency medication and said, you know what? I'm just going to trust this and be grateful for it because um, I must need to stop for some reason. You know, mm. I was going to prepare a whole bunch for, for our conversation today. And, you know, again, it was anytime I try and take control of something and plan too much, mm. I, I'm stopped because I feel like I'm, I'm meant to have this trust in the intuitive unfolding of things, trust the mm -hmm. process, be present now. Mm -hmm. And so I just relinquished and I said, all right, I'm gonna, I have to go to sleep in a pitch black room under a fan and, and have the hot washcloth on the eyeballs and be a mess. You know, I, I, I heard this transformation recently about a caterpillar, you know, a caterpillar goes in, creates the safe space, and then they turn to goo. I had to turn to goo this morning. To have the transformation to be here and just allow what's our conversation to unfold without prepping or scripting or anything. And you've showed up as the most beautiful butterfly. <laughs> you went through the process here. So I have a couple of random questions as we're going to run out of time, which I always hate with the show because I, right. I get all excited. And I have so many more questions and we're kind of just warmed up and then they say, hey, out of here. Right. So questions like the show is called Zero Limits Living. And I always like to ask my guests, do we have limits? Do you believe we have any limits? And if so, what are they? 
I believe we only have the limits that we that we that we claim that we choose to cling to um, right. because mm-hmm. my whole life has been an example of mm. taking the limits off. You know what happens when you believe in the limitless, divine, eternal abundance that exists simultaneously in the now. That's why mm-hmm. my book is called Right Now. It is. And it's a it's about choosing to access that flow state where the past and the future fall away, and we mm. are immersed. Oh, that's good. That's good. And, and that is where it is. It is abundance in that state of being so immersed in flow state, and that is where the writing and the the painting, and the, you know, like it, it's just this beautiful way to say I, I can enter this flow state. And be in that place of zero limits. I love it. Absolutely. And this is the more I touch in there, our inner world and our outer world reflects it. And so yeah. if I go there, prioritize that, unbelievable opportunities and connections and possibilities just here you go, Jess. It's beautiful. And the book is called Right Now, W R I T E now, N O W. And is it coming out any day? Or is it it's on coming Amazon out anyway now? Day. No, and it's going to be just through my link. Um, oh, the, and your link is what? Um, Jessica so Hughes Fine Art? Jessica Hughes Fine Art.com is just the fine art website. Oh, okay. Um, I'm always looking for shortcuts. And if I don't have to have a website that's perfect for the coaching yet, I don't. And so I, I believe in like the scrappy fun way, however, we can bring it into reality and get it into the hands of people. So it's going to be just a PDF download, um, 30 pages long. If I can solve that problem for people in, in 30 pages or 40 pages. Um, so it's going to come out, uh, really. And then by next week, it'll be available. And how do people get it? It'll be available where? So justhughes.co forward slash book. JessHughes.co forward slash book. Yes. All right. I got it. And Chris will put it on the screen for people here. Another question I have for you in our remaining time is what were you hoping I would either ask you or you would get to talk about? Did you have something juicy in the back of your mind and you're like, oh, I've always wanted to talk about this, or I really hope Dr. Joe asked me this question. Was there something there? I guess what I, what in, I know you have come from zero to (laughs) zero limits. Right. So there's a lot of resonance in our stories. And I feel, I guess, what do you have to share in parallel that that kind of fuses with with my story? Because our experiences can be so different. Each person mm. experiences their very own, but it's in that resonance that we we grow and we expand and you know move into what a that. wonderful what a wonderful answer. Instead of telling me what you wanted me to ask, you asked me a question. <laughs> I mean, that is so sweet of you, and it's such a generous thing to do. I'll give you a quick answer. I think our job is to awaken, and what we're awakening to is our own superpower, if you will, or divine power. Arnold Patton was one of my greatest teachers, and he said, we don't create abundance. We create limitations. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that is so insightful, because what it was really implying is we just have to find the beliefs, in my language, that is causing our limitations. Mm -hmm. When we erase the beliefs of limitations, voila, abundance was there all along. Yes. And so I I think that's where we're connecting in a very big way, because I'm continuously finding limits and collapsing them. I'm Mm -hmm. in the human experience. I still have things I butt my head up against. But when I butt against them, I know, oh, there's something there. Let me see what it is and collapse it, remove it, erase it, or replace it so that I can get to zero limits living. I My love- take is we don't have any limits. I just think they're they're all mental constructs. And for the most part, we just agree on them. Right. But science itself keeps changing its mind about what's out there and what's real and what's possible. So I, I think it's all it's all moldable. It it's is. All a, it it's is. all a it, great big 3D game. 
And I know we're running out of time, but I had a trigger on that is that we're programmed to problem solve, you know, and this bashing our head against the wall, trying to think our way through to a solution when, when what I do now is if I have a limiting belief, I, when I learned that the brain, the mind doesn't know the difference between a fake memory and a real memory, I was like, I'm golden. I can imagine my way. (laughs) And so if I have a limiting (laughs) belief, I can write the story. You know, I, I didn't trust myself to have money. So I was resisting it, didn't even know it. And I dug into some limiting beliefs around wealth. And I was like, how can I rewrite this? Wow. And it was, it was, I didn't problem solve my way through that. I rewrote the story through imagination, literally writing. And I, and now I, if there's a problem, I, I, I just wait for the solution to appear. I, I get myself out of the way. Well, this is going to be a number one issue for a lot of people because it's a common question. They'll say, okay, I visualized what I wanted. I stated my intention. Now what do I do? Mm-hmm. They want to know the how. Mm-hmm. They want to know the next steps. And and what I'm hearing, what, how would you answer that? I don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, the way it's- I answer it is is prioritize what you need in that moment to feel good. Go mm-hmm. have fun. Don't try and work harder and struggle you know, be in that struggle state, go play. I mean, that's so much of, of the, the art I create is in play, finger paint, activate that inner child, inner abundant, you know, that inner mm-hmm. artist that was mm-hmm. a kindergartner that loved it. Um, mm-hmm. Connect with someone who believes in you when you don't believe in yourself, you know, feel good in that energy of, of just, ah, oh, I appreciate it. You know, even when I am not feeling top, tip top, you know, the writing, I can write myself into a better state or I can go for a walk and feel better. Um, or you so, have seven kids you can go play with. I do. <laughs> <laughs> They're all teenagers yeah. and young adults now. They don't, you know, oh, but I have right. great relationships with them. They're fun, really fun. What, in the last minute we have, what's next for you? What are you most excited about? Do you have something that you've been envisioning or future gratituding that is uh, down the pike coming, coming to you? I'm excited to work with more people. I, mm-hmm. I really found a heart for, you know, not just a small group of elite people that can afford really super high level coaching. I have that program, but I really want to um, this message to spread my story to spread so I can, I can reach people, you know, with a $7 book about right now. And then the Mm -hmm. sequel to that is now paint, you know, because if you paint right now, the process of what I'm talking about is the now right paint and, and just putting that out into the world in a fun, fun way. Um, How do people find out about how do they find out about working with you, your group, or your high-end coaching you mentioned? Is there a place to go, or how do they reach you? Sure. I've got my email address on social media. Jessica Hughes Fine Art is my handle everywhere on Facebook, on Instagram. Follow me. Write a DM. You know, Tell me where you heard me speak. And uh, yeah, I'm, I really love connecting. And if I can't you know, don't know the answer. I know a lot of fabulous people now that um, I can point people to if I don't have the answer. Jess, you are one of the most amazing people. (laughs) Uh, I already sensed it from everything you've been doing to help Lisa, but you are in person, just uh, you're an angel in human form, just inspiring everybody and touching lives. Thank you. I'm very grateful that you've made time. Do you have any last words, so to speak, before we sign off here? I just hope everybody listening has had some sort of little shift or awakening or has found resonance um not to look at me at oh how great is Jess Hughes but I resonate with the darkness or the the adversity and if she can do it I can too because that is really what I want to give people is the belief in the self you know help them find that help them find that creative genius inside and however you can turn the limits to the unlimited, you know, like absolutely anything is possible. If I can do it with the madhouse of a life that I have, then, then uh, everybody can too. 
But I have loved being here, love talking with you, love sharing this this conversation with your audience. And uh, I'm excited about what will unfold um, next for both of us. Well, as I like to say, expect miracles. Yes. I'm Dr. Joe Vitale. You've been listening or watching Zero Limits Living. Every week, I bring you inspiration and information to transform your life. I'm putting all the shows in one place, ZeroLimitsLivingTV.com. Also, remember to get your free session with Miracles Coaching. Go to MiraclesCoaching.com. No obligation. Go check it out. And I want to thank Lux Media Studios for putting on this show. Candace Barr for believing in me. Chris for running the cameras and being the wizard behind electronics. And I want to thank all of you for watching. As I like to say, expect miracles. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.